in response to a, a request left in, in the comment section under one of my videos, uh, I, I'm going to do I'm going to present some information here on a substance called stinging nettles, which has long been popular in bodybuilding circles as a reputed testosterone booster. I'll talk about that in a minute. But stinging, stinging nettle, the scientific name is Urtica diosia. The ancient Egyptians used stinging nettles to treat arthritis and lower back pain, while the Roman troops rubbed it on themselves to help stay warm. Like this, the scientific name Urtica diosia comes from this Latin word uru, which means bur to burn because its leaves can cause a temporary burning sensation upon contact, hence the name stinging nettles. The leaves have hair-like structures that sting and also produce itching, redness, and swelling. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the chemicals later on that cause this. However, once stinging nettle is processed into a supplement, dried, freeze-dried, or cooked, stinging nettle can be safely consumed. Uh, and studies, again, link it to a number of health benefits. I should also point out that most of these health benefits involve, uh, unfortunately, animal studies that need human confirmation. So that is a uh, kind of confounding bit of information about stinging nettle. A lot of it is, again, animal and test tube studies. These studies did show that stinging nettle reduced levels of multiple inflammatory hormones by interfering with their synthesis and production. In human studies, applying a stinging nettle cream or consuming stinging nettle products appears to relieve inflammatory conditions such as arthritis. In one study a 20, uh, involving 27 people, they applied a stinging nettle cream onto arthritis affected areas and it significantly reduced pain compared to a placebo. In another study, taking a supplement that contains stinging nettle significantly reduced arthritic pain and the participants in that study felt they could reduce their dose of anti-inflammatory pain relievers because of the stinging nettle supplement which is good because anti-inflammatory drugs come with a number of side effects including possible cardiovascular disease again this a lot of this is based on uh, on, on animal research and needs to be confirmed in human research uh, another a more familiar use of stinging nettle is to treat uh, what they call prostate enlargement or, or benign prostate hyperplasia, BPH. Up to 50% of men 51 years of old have an enlarged prostate. The enlarged prostate is commonly called, as I said, benign prostatic hyperplasia. Uh, they, uh, no one really knows the cause of uh, uh, benign prostate hyperplasia. Uh, a lot of people think it's caused by testosterone. It is not. It is not, uh, I mean, uh, in increased prostate size, is, it's not caused by testosterone. Uh, and the problem with the uh, enlarged prostate is it presses on the urethra, which is the tube leading from the kidneys, uh, where urine is excreted out of the body. It can it may make urination difficult or even painful. And this is the big problem with the benign prostatic hyperplasia. They give a number of drugs to prevent it. In fact, the drug uh, finasteride, uh, what its main use is to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia. Of course, it's also used in a smaller dosage to treat male pattern baldness. And there's other drugs, too, that help to relax the smooth muscles around the urethra to help uh, increase the urination. Uh, but uh, sting and nettle is kind of a natural way to do this. Uh, there's a couple of animal studies that show that it actually is pretty effective. A 2012 rat study, for example, revealed that this Stinging nettle may prevent the conversion of testosterone into dehydrotestosterone. Uh, and uh, the dehydro dehydrotestosterone, DHT, is associated with benign prostatic uh, hyperplasia. Not testosterone, but dehydrotestosterone. Dehydrotestosterone uh, is, uh, is a basically um, it's a kind of a byproduct of testosterone metabolism. Uh, testosterone is converted into dehydrotestosterone through the, act through the actions of an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase and stinging nettle works by inhibiting 5-alpha reductase and this of course can also have bodybuilding applications because uh, if you reduce DHT you reduce side effects associated with testosterone such as acne, male pattern, baldness and uh, and prostate problems so you know it could be of use again though most of this is animal study so you have to take that into account uh, Studies in, uh, with people that do have benign, benign prostatic hyperplasia have demonstrated the single nettle ex, uh, stinging nettle extracts. They help treat short and long-term urination problems without side effects. And the drugs, as I said, do have side effects for treating the same condition. The usual suggested dose of stinging nettle for treating BPH is 120 milligrams three times a day or a total of 320 milligrams a day. 
Uh, but, you know, nobody, it's really not clear how effective stinging nettle is for treating BPH compared to the drugs. You know, nobody really tested it, you know, did a head-to-head -head comparison. Now, as far as the testosterone, uh, stinging nettle contains six isolectins, they're called, uh, and these things are known to, uh, to inhibit testosterone from binding to sex hormone globulin, or SHGB. Sex hormone binding globulin is a protein produced in the liver, which binds the testosterone in the blood, carries it in the blood. Uh, unfortunately, when uh, testosterone is bound to sex hormone binding globulin, it's not active. Only the free or unbound form of testosterone is active. So the idea is by taking uh, stinging nettle extract supplements, you decrease the binding of sex hormone binding globulin to testosterone. Therefore, you increase the amount of free testosterone. So it has a kind of a, free, a, a, a testosterone elevation effect. That's the rationale in bodybuilding for using a stinging nettle. Now, it should be noted that in the, in the studies of humans who took stinging nettle to treat benign prosthetic hypertrophy, uh, the, the uh, stinging nettle d did prove effective for treating BPH. However, careful measurement of the male subject's testosterone level showed no changes whatsoever in testosterone. But, but something to keep in mind is that by, by decreasing or interfering with, uh, and as I said earlier, uh, uh, stinging nettle seems to uh, blunt the synthesis of dehydrotestosterone by inhibiting the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. Inhibiting DHT will increase testosterone. And a secondary effect of stinging nettle is that it also, not very powerfully, but it does inhibit another enzyme called aromatase, which converts testosterone into estrogen. So if you look at those two factors, you know, lowering this, uh, DHT possibly, and also slightly lowering aromatase, it would make sense that stinging nettle does have a slight effect on increasing testosterone. However, this would require further study. The present human male studies don't show any increase in testosterone, but the, uh, the uh, animal study showed that it lowered uh, sex hormone binding globulin by 67%, which is pretty impressive. Uh, it has to be, again, confirmed by human studies. Uh, other uses for stinging nettle, it can be useful for treating hay fever and allergies. Hay fever is an allergy that involves inflammation in the lining of your nose. Stinging nettle it could be a natural treatment for hay fever. A test tube or in vitro research shows that stinging nettle extracts can inhibit the inflammation that, that can trigger seasonal allergies. This includes blocking histamine receptors and stopping immune cells from releasing chemicals that trigger allergy symptoms, such as histamine. However, human studies note that stinging nettle is equal to or only slightly better at treating hay fever than a placebo. So it's not real, even though it's suggested that you'll see it on various websites that stinging nettle can treat hay fever and allergies. Uh, it's not that potent for that uh, use. Uh, stinging nettle can also uh, possibly treat high blood pressure or hypertension. Uh, it's been used traditionally to treat elevated blood pressure. Animal and test tube studies illustrate that it may help lower blood pressure in several ways. For one, it can actually stimulate nitric oxide, which again is a big interest to bodybuilders because of the effect of nitric oxide on muscle pump and delivering more oxygen to muscles, increasing you know blood circulation within muscles, which delivers more nutrients. Well, it turns out that uh, stinging nettle actually does stimulate nitric oxide production, which is a little known fact about stinging, uh, stinging nettle. Stinging nettle also has compounds that can act as calcium channel blockers. Uh, calcium channel blockers are drugs used to uh, treat hypertension. They work by uh, uh, interacting with calcium in the smooth muscle lining the blood vessels to relax the blood vessels. So uh, stinging nettle is an actual natural calcium channel blocker, which would uh, help to lower blood pressure. Uh, it, uh, animal studies have shown that it, it, it can lower blood pressure while raising the heart's antioxidant defenses because stinging nettle also has nutrients in it which provide antioxidant activity. Uh, but again, you know, the, the effect of uh, stinging nettle in humans needs to be further investigated. Uh, stinging nettle also might aid uh, in uh, helping to prevent diabetes and in treating what they call pre-diabetes, B-diabetes, or insulin sensitivity. Human and animal studies have, have linked stinging nettle to lower blood sugar levels. This plant contains compounds that actually may mimic the effects of insulin. 
Uh, the compound substances themselves are called UD1 and UD2. Now, I, I hasten to add, before you get carried away, don't look at stinging nettle as an insulin-like substance that's going to have anabolic effects. Because a lot of people think that insulin helps build muscle. In fact, it has anti-catabolic effects. It helps to prevent the breakdown of muscle rather than building up muscle. But in any case, stinging nettle does not exactly add, act like insulin, but rather it contains compounds that mimic the effects of insulin in helping to low, lower elevated blood glucose levels, which is a very good effect if you're insulin insensitive or if you have diabetes, early stages of diabetes. In a three-month study of 46 people, taking 500 milligrams of stinging nettle extract three times a day, significantly lowered blood sugar levels compared to a placebo. Uh, again, this, that, that, that was a good study. It shows a definite indication that stinging nettle might be useful for lowering elevated blood glucose. However, I would suggest that you, again, it needs further human confirmation. Uh, other effects of stinging nettle include reduced bleeding after surgery. It helps protect your liver. Uh, it helps your liver get rid of toxins. It has antioxidant, uh, antioxidant action in your liver. And uh, stinging nettle also provides natural di diuretic effects. And for that reason, it's a good idea if you use stinging nettle, don't take it with any drug diuretics because it can uh, exaggerate the effects and you can get side effects. So don't use stinging nettle with any kind of diuretic. Uh, if you're actually handling stinging nettle leaves itself, you have to be very careful because the barbs of the stinging nettle can harm your skin. Uh, these barbs can inject an array of chemicals, including acetylcholine, histamine, serotonin, which are these are neurotransmitters, leukotrienes, and formic acid. Very irritating if you do handle it and you get an irritation. If you uh, rub aloe vera lotion on the irritation part, it'll help to relieve the itching and the uh, and the uh, bumps and hives that, that result from touching stinging nettle leaves. Some can, in very rare cases, some people might have a severe allergic reaction. Uh, anaphylaxis after they ingest uh, stinging nettle. So if you have a tendency to uh, severe allergies, I would avoid stinging nettle. It should also not be used by pregnant women because it can cause uterine contractions where a woman can actually miscarry. So pregnant women absolutely should never go near stinging nettle. It can also interact with drugs such as, as I said, diuretics, blood thinning drugs, uh, which are commonly used by people with atrial fibrillation to block blood clots. Uh, again, stinging nettle will accentuate the actions of those drugs and uh, possibly cause uh, excessive bleeding. Uh, and also, you don't want to take uh, stinging nettle with a drug called lithium. It's a mineral used to treat bipolar illness. Uh, again, if you take stinging nettle with lithium, it'll in increase the chances of side effects with lithium. Uh, which can also lead to a thyroid depressive effect. So that's about it for uh, stinging nettle. Again, uh, you know, I think the, the it shows pr pretty good potential for helping to control elevated blood glucose. Um, as far as the testosterone effects, kind of up in the air. I, I think it would probably have a minor effect, but, uh, you know, by, by displacing sex hormone binding globulin uh, with testosterone, it might increase free testosterone will have a slight effect. Uh, I think the effect of, uh, of uh, blunting DHT, dehydrotestosterone, is however a, a more important effect because that I think will help to control uh, enlarged prostate glands. It, it could be useful for that. Uh, and so that's about it for stinging nettle. If you want further information about nutrition, exercise science, supplements, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that really work, ergogenic aids, uh, women's health and fitness, uh, hormonal therapy. Subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, and general health. I also answer questions on the Applied Metabolics Facebook page. Speaking of questions, um, Current subscribers only are, are welcome to submit short questions to me through the email portal on my Applied Metabolics website. However, this is only for current subscribers. I don't answer unsolicited questions. You're welcome to leave comments under these videos. You could, like, like I say, you could leave suggestions. This video was made because somebody had asked me to do a video on stinging nettle, so I made the video. So I will try to comply with reasonable requests for uh, 
video, uh, upcoming videos, so future videos. Uh, I won't do videos on steroids um, or how to use steroids because, um, again, that's uh, frowned upon by Google who owns YouTube. And uh, there's a chance they could remove my entire channel. I'm not going to risk that. So you'll have to go elsewhere for steroid information. You won't, you won't get it here. I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, and that's about it. So, uh, again, applied metabolics, 40 to 50 pages every month. No advertisement, solid evidence-based information based on my 58 years of constant study and experience. The most in-depth, I believe, the most in-depth digital publication related to health, fitness, and nutrition anywhere. I've seen a lot of them. None of them can compare to what I put into this newsletter. I also put in my experience. I, I kind of relate all the mistakes I made in all the years I've been training, which is absolutely invaluable and priceless and which cannot be supplied by anyone or the, any of these other newsletters because they simply don't have my level of experience. And experience is important. Uh, in some ways, it's it's more important than a 1,000 PhDs. <laughs> so anyway, so again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. They are great. And, uh, you know, I look for senior dogs. So senior dogs, in my experience, you know, they, they unfortunately, they're some of the least adoptable dogs because people know that, you know, with senior dogs comes higher vet bills. But my experience, I can tell you this, senior dogs are the most loving, most loyal dogs of all. They're completely trained, and they truly fit the description of man's best friend. They will be with you all the time. They, they're so loyal and affectionate. It's incredible. So, you know, save a senior dog if you can. Make their last couple of years happy. I mean, you'll, you'll get benefit yourself. Thanks for listening.